everyone. This is Dr. Anoki Khanum from the Apiatrics. Uh, this is the Health Scooter Series live chat um, with Dr. Richardson on allergies and eczema. Hello, Dr. Yes, Richardson. Yes. Welcome. Hello. Again. How are you? Yes. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? It's very good. Very good. How's, how's well, the weather? We're at it you? again. Yeah, yeah. How's the weather? Well, it's good. It I cooled heard. off a little bit. We had a big rainstorm and then it cooled off. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. I was, yeah. I was being told it's winter has arrived there. We're still waiting for winter to arrive here. Um, ah, but from okay. a seasonal point of view, it already is because the temperature mm -hmm. is already starting to cool off. So you're seeing a lot of <laughs> your usual runny noses and coughs. Yes. Yes. All right. Now, on, on that note, I think we should mm -hmm. just dive straight in. Okay. Um, on allergies, so uh, Dr. Richardson, what are allergies? Okay, an allergy is basically the body reacting to something that the immune system has viewed as like a foreign attacker. And so the immune system starts charging against it. And when the immune system does that, different chemicals get released that like called histamines and things like, and leukotrienes that actually start making your eyes water, making your throat itch, making your nose run, uh, making you sneeze. And if you have uh, asthma, you can even start wheezing if it goes from the upper airway down to the lower airway. So basically, we're talking about a reaction that the immune system is having to some kind of invading substance like a pollen or, or a bee sting or something like that, or even a, a food allergy or something that could cause a reaction in the body. Yes. Yeah. And in Karachi, um, we have a lot of dust. So we see a lot of mm -hmm. dust mite allergies. Mm -hmm. And um, we have a very high rate of pollution. Okay. So, I mean, um, I, I think that also, I mean, do you agree? I think that also plays some role. In, oh, absolutely. Uh, I mean, you're havoc. talking about Yes, when you're talking about ozone and, and car exhaust and ozone, and these things can be irritants, strong fumes in the air that can be irritants to the airway. Of course, cause your eyes to burn or itch or sting or water, your nose to run, things like that. Itchy throat, all of that. Yes. So um, allergies have, what are the different types of allergies that people can have? So, Well, you can have what's called environmental allergy, allergies. What, whatever is triggering your symptoms, they're all in different classes. So you can have environmental allergies, which are things like that basically float in the air, pollen, dust, uh, like you said, dust mites, the little, little insects that live in the dust. Uh, and uh, then you can have environmental odors like strong fumes. Uh, that can also be an irritant. Then you can have food allergies where a person may eat, ingest a certain food and the, that, that then triggers, again, that response from the body saying, hey, get out of here. And the body kind of goes into an attack and tries to get that out. And these are usually like little components or proteins in certain foods. And sometimes you'll find that if the food is fresh or raw, you'll have a problem with it. But if you cook it, which then kind of neutralizes the protein, you won't have a problem. So a person may have allergy to an apple, but if it's cooked in a pie, then they won't have a problem with it. So yeah. it's usually it's, like yeah. a fresh fruit. Yeah. So I think it's just important to highlight there that um, mm -hmm. please, if your child, um, it's only if your physician has said to cook the food and then feed it, you mm -hmm. should do that. But if the child mm -hmm. has a severe form of allergy to a food product, so avoid it completely. Avoid it completely. So I yeah. have what exactly what you're describing is an oral mm -hmm. allergy. Um, I can't eat some of these raw foods um, mm -hmm. because it causes a lot of discomfort in the mouth, mm -hmm. sore throats, mm -hmm. sometimes yeah. a little bit of tummy ache, but it never gets severe. And we know those mm -hmm. allergies never do. But when you mm -hmm. cook the food, it's completely fine. Mm -hmm. But it's just important to differentiate because I don't want parents to go start yeah, eating we don't, foods. We, and right now, like something, that's, only, that's only true about fruits. Now, if we're talking about yeah. tree nuts, peanuts, and yeah. things like that, whatever Stop. form they're in there are some people who can't even be in an area where they're even being handled because that's yeah. enough to get them sick so sick, they're, yeah. they're definitely if you have a food allergy the key protection is avoidance and then you yeah. can have allergies to medications the most famous one people know about is penicillin 
but some people can have allergy to sulfur medications and other medications. You can have allergies to medications. Uh, you can have eczema, which is like, like where your skin is super sensitive to things that come in contact with it. And then you can also have a skin contact type of allergy. And that's where, you know, like uh, d different metals, like coins or jewelry, uh, different soaps or things, anything that can touch the skin and then irritate the skin, uh, that can be a problem. Uh, a real imp uh, co important one is latex allergy, which is important when you're talking about baby nipples, uh, pacifiers, things of that nature. If your baby is allergic to uh, uh, latex, that can sometimes be very serious. It's very important they label uh, the charts in the hospital because that's a very serious allergy, latex allergy. So, um, so what, what skin... do the kids, I mean, what do the kids, because uh, this is one of the questions parents are going to ask, because mm -hmm. you're highlighting latex, latex allergy. So if a child mm -hmm. is on a bottle that has latex in it, mm -hmm. um, I mean, what, what do you see? I mean, you kids? may see where their, where their lips uh, get swollen when they're using the bottle. Sometimes uh, babies that are using pacifiers and where the two areas where the pacifier touch their cheeks, that area will become very red and irritated. So, uh, and then of course, if you put a Band-Aid on the child and that has latex and in it, to latex, that you would see where the Band-Aid is, that area would get red and swollen. So oh, yeah. if there's any question that there's a, and as a matter of fact, there's a, you can even see some products will even have latex free on them. So any plastic looking product, if you think that your child has a problem with that, you want to make sure that it's actually labeled that it's latex free to avoid free. that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So we've uh, gone the different, we got, so we got the environmental allergens, we got the contact allergens and mm -hmm. we got the food allergens. Okay. And medicate and medication. Medication allergens. Yeah. Oh, and um, the, another one is bee stings uh, and insect venom. Bee stings can be very serious. Uh, and if you have a problem with that, you know, you would need to have that EpiPen, the one that works quickly, those self auto injectors. You need to have that. Anybody that has serious food allergies, allergies to uh, bee stings. And these are used to identify once you have a, had a consultation with an allergist or if you have yeah. one episode, you definitely want to get with an allergist so that you can yeah. pr protect yourself so we in the don't future. Have, yeah, yeah. so we don't have pediatric allergists as such in Pakistan, oh. uh, okay. Karachi. So um, uh -huh. the patients usually come to me and okay. I okay. ask for advice if I get stuck <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> okay. um, but yeah. Um, another important thing to highlight about allergies, um, mm -hmm. so if the um, patient has been exposed to it once, I mean, like, for example, mm -hmm. with food, um, right. when we tell our parents, um, when we're starting on solids, we yeah. tell them to highlight. Uh, three but times, like, three times a okay, day, so or like, three to five days in a row. That way, they can know if the child had some kind of reaction. If you, ha if the child has some kind of reaction to the food, you, you will know because you're giving one. You test the test. Eat food individually, yeah. three times a day for three to five days in a row. That way, you'll yeah. know. No, yeah, exactly. And um, it's, um, I, th I think it's important to highlight that it may not be on the first exposure, because then I'll have exactly. parents start adding everything in. And I'm like, right. no, you need to do one thing at a time so that you can right. identify easily. Yeah. And it may not be the first exposure, the first exposure, exactly. the body first recognizing that, oops, mm -hmm. I don't like this. Right. And the subsequent times is when. When you um, get the actual reaction, exactly. Yeah. So if, for example, a child has eaten something this morning and tomorrow mm -hmm. morning they start throwing up, would that mm -hmm. be an allergy um, to what they ate this not, morning? Uh, to an egg, not necessarily because yeah. usually, it's, it's, usually it's, it's within a couple of 30 minutes to about yeah. 30 minutes, no, no later than about four hours because you usually have that quick reaction to reaction. that. So you would, yeah. know, you would know immediately. Yeah, you would yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. So that's also something that I thought was important mm -hmm. to highlight because you get a lot of parents who come in, they're like, but I thought yesterday afternoon they ate something and they're vomiting now. And mm -hmm. I'm like, no, it's usually within two hours you see profuse vomiting yeah. diarrhea or skin rash. Um, and right. as you said, mostly within 30 minutes. Right. Um, so yeah, so we've done food allergies. Um, environmental the um, allergies that mm -hmm. causes your runny nose and watery mm -hmm. eyes and things like that. Um, so 
tricky question. Mm -hmm. It's winter. So you're mm. going to see a lot of runny noses and watery eyes mm. and sore throats. Mm -hmm. Does that necessarily mean that we have so many kids who are coming down with allergies in winter? Well, no, 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 usually it's the key with allergy a lot of times is itching. You'll have an itchy throat, itchy eyes, and a, or your nose is itching. If you have a cold, your nose will be running, but you won't have itching. You won't have, your eyes won't be itching. The key with allergy is that there's itching because itching. there's irritation. So if they're just having a runny nose, that's not, that's not allergy. Uh, in the, in the wintertime, children can get exposed to viruses. You can have uh, seven to nine colds in a season. And it usually takes you about seven days for the cold to run its course. So if you pick up one virus and then a week or so later you pick up another virus, it can look like every time you turn around the child's nose is running. But, you know, you simply just want to rinse the nasal passages, you know, just kind of make sure your children are washing their hands because, you know, hand sanitizer doesn't get rid of all the germs. You really need to wash your hands. I always tell them, sing the happy birthday song. That's how you can easily know 20 seconds you want to wash your hands, rub them together, and then rinse them for 10 seconds. And that way you can be sure that you're getting any germs off of your um, hand to pass yeah. it because everybody inadvertently touches their face, touches their nose, and that's an easy way to spread germs from one person to the other. Yeah. So, it's, so as, as you said, important to highlight in the winter months, your mm -hmm. child, uh, especially the younger ones, it's mm -hmm. normal for them. I'll just say yeah. in Urdu for the Urdu speaking, uh, uh, my Urdu speaking patients. Um, Sardeo ke mahine me, ye koi jab bache ko naak bhera hai, aankhe dal ho re, khansi ho ra hai. Iska matlab nahi hai ke winter ke month me sardeo me allergies ho re. Um, Sardeo ke mahine me chote bache ko ye nazla zukam ho sakta hai. एक दो दफा दो दफा महीने में पूरे सर्दियों में हर दो दफा हर महीना दो दो दफा नाक भैरी है जुकाम नजला ये बहुत नॉर्मल होती है और इसका मतलब नहीं है कि बच्चे को एलर्जी हो रही है एंड अनदर थिंग इंपॉर्टेंट आई थिंक टू हाईलाइट इज डू एनी हिस्टमीन्स और एनी ऑफ द एलर्जी मेडिकेशंस दैट वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट राइट नाउ हैव एन इफेक्ट ऑन योर वायरल कोल्ड्स एंड कॉफ्स well, no, they don't have an effect on that because what the, the, what's driving the um, antihistamine, what it's combating is the release of histamine. When you have a runny nose from a cold, there's no release of histamine. So there's nothing for the antihistamine to work on. So basically, you just want to you know, kind of keep the nose moist. You wipe it, use Kleenex and use once and, dis and discard. That way you don't, con like using a handkerchief, you could end up reinfecting yourself. Yeah, yeah. So, I asked you that when the child has a problem, do you have to give a difference? Especially the drugs that are anti-histamine, do you have to give a difference? You have to just put it in a bottle, with a normal saline, with a normal saline, just to clean it up, to see that the child is drinking water and drinking water, and eating it well, and to wash your hands. Wash your hands is very important. Okay? All right. So, we've... Touched on medications. So, what are the medications mm -hmm. for allergies? Okay, well, there are several classes of medications that are used for allergy, and they're all targeted at either uh, eliminating the symptom or trying to control the symptom. So, the antihistamines are kind of like the first line because a histamine is a very powerful chemical in the body that keeps the allergic response going. So if you can take medication to kind of taper that down, that really helps. You want to use the antihistamines that are non-sedating. That's kind of the, the ones that mo won't make you sleepy and drowsy, especially if the child is in school. You don't want the child sleeping in school because they're taking medication that's making them drowsy. Now, sometimes the antihistamines may not be enough. No. Do you and have uh, the generic names of the antihistamines? Yes. Yeah, well, you're, we're talking about either loratadine or the uh, cetirizine. Cetirizine, yeah. Yeah, those, those are the ones that are very common over the counter. You, can, you don't even need a prescription for them. And they are very helpful in terms of eliminating your discomfort and itching that you have with allergy. Um, they also, a lot of times if you have a lot of problems with a lot of nasal congestion, where the lining of the nose is very swollen and, uh, and the child is just having a lot of problems with that, Using an inhaled steroid, whether you spray the little uh, mist into the nose, 
with the steroid that really helps shrink swelling in the nasal passage. And it also kind of stabilizes. There's a cell in the body, the mast cell, that, that, that gets disrupted and releases the histamine. So if you can kind of stabilize that to not release histamine, that really helps also. And then there's a third uh, line of medications. The, they call them leukotriene modifiers. Leukotriene is another chemical in the body that once it gets activated can really keep the allergy symptoms going. So if you can take a medication that kind of tapers that, re that med the reaction of that chemical down, that helps. Leukotriene modifiers and those that you need a prescription for that. Yeah. So can I just translate this into Urdu? Yes. So uh, um, Dr. Richardson, हमारे साथ अभी बात कर रही थी वो जो आपके जो बच्चे की allergies होती हैं जहाँ पर नाक हर वक्त भैरा होता है या बहुत blocked होती है बहुत सारी itching होती है आपको ये ख्याल रखना है कि फर्क कैसे जानते कि अगर ये allergy है या सिर्फ नजला जुकाम है allergy में बहुत सारी itching होती है तो नाक को हर वक्त ऐसे स्क्रैचिंग करते हैं बच्चे को और ये नजला जुकाम में नहीं करते हैं और अगर बच्चे का बहुत कंजेस्टन होती है नाक में तो तीन दवाएं होती हैं जिस पर दूसरी दूसरी लेवल्स पर करते हैं ये आप डॉक्टर के साथ डॉक्टर के साथ ही बात करके देते हैं खुद ही नहीं देते पहली वाली होती है एंटी हिस्टमिन्स हिस्टमिन्स वो सब्सटेंस है जो जिसम में होती है जो रिलीज होती है एलर्जीज में ठीक है और ये चीज होती है जो सारी जो ये इचिंग होती है मेरे ख्याल से खारिश बोलते हैं वो कराता है तो जब हम एंटी हिस्टमिन्स देती है इसको थोड़ा सा आराम मिलता है ठीक है अगर एंटी हिस्टमिन्स देने के बाद हम चंद दिनों के लिए देते हैं एंटी हिस्टमिन्स अगर हम देखते हैं इससे के साथ काम नहीं हो रहा है तो दूसरा लेवल जो होती है वो नेजल स्टेरॉयड्स होती है वो स्प्रे होती है एंटी हिस्टमिन्स हम लेते हैं सिरप के फॉर्म में या दवाई के फॉर्म में वरना स्प्रे लेते हैं स्टेरॉयड की ठीक है ये भी बहुत सेफ होती है और आम तौर पर मेरे एक्सपीरियंस में जो बच्चे एंटी हिस्टमिन्स पर रिएक्ट नहीं किए वो स्टेरॉयड्स को बहुत अच्छे से तरीके से रैक किया था कर जाते और वो बहुत अच्छे तरीके से सेटल हो जाते हैं और अगर एंटी हिस्टमिन और नेजल स्टेरॉयड्स के बावजूद ये सेटल नहीं हो रहा है तो तीसरी लाइन जो होती है वो लुकोट्राइन रिसेप्टर इनहिबिटर्स होती है मोंटी लुकास्ट होती है जो हम देते हैं दिस इज़ द जेनेरिक फॉर्म ठीक है जेनेरिक का मतलब है अगर आप बॉक्से पर देखेंगे ना तो उसके नीचे लिखेंगे लिखा हुआ होगा कि इस इस दवाई के अंदर कौन सी दवाई होती है ठीक है तो ये है तीन दवाइयों एक के बाद दूसरे देते हैं सारे तीन एक साथ पहली दफा नहीं देते हमें देखना होता है कि अगर पहला वाला देते हैं देखना होता है कि अगर काम कर रहा है तो पर उसी पर पहले लेवल पर रहती है अगर काम नहीं कर रहा है तो दूसरी स्टेप पर जाते हैं और वो भी काम नहीं कर रहा है तो तीसरी स्टेप पर जाती है मगर ये सारी चीजें जो होती है ना आप अपने डॉक्टर के साथ बात करके आ, करना होता है ये प्लीज आप खुद ही खुद घर पर नहीं करें ओके आई जस्ट हाईलाइट आई नो इट साउंड बिट मोर देन वॉट यूर ओन उटिस Uh, and speak to them, but this is just to inform you, like basically to educate, um, okay, what we are doing. What, so we what, the, what's being done? Yeah. Yeah. So this is the what we call rhinitis, your allergic yes. rhinitis. What we were talking about. Um. So the next, but it's it's pretty much the same uh, category for all allergies, more or less. Yeah. It's in different forms. The medications. Am I correct? Yes. That's more true. or less. Yeah. So yeah. So the next. Um. So um, an eczema medication. Okay. Now eczema, uh, you have two parts with eczema because you really want to keep the key with eczema is to keep the skin moisturized. So eczema, should we touch on like what eczema is? Because I don't. Think yeah, eczema is is, is a hypersensitivity of the skin, mm -hmm. where the skin is reacts to uh, different uh, substances that can come in contact with it, and and or sometimes uh, some the child may eat something that causes the skin to flare, but when you have a flare. That's when you want to do treatment. So the some of, so if you know something that kind of causes the child's skin to flare, the key is to try to avoid that. And then uh, if the child does 
have eczema, uh, you can do, the, the key is to keep the skin moisturized so that whatever topical treatment that you use will be able to get to the skin and help control the symptoms. Uh, eczema is usually treated with steroid creams. You wanna start with the lowest strength first because you don't wanna overdo and use powerful steroids because steroids can make the skin thin. So if the skin is very thin, it's more easy to be irritated, breakthrough, and then you're at risk also for getting a secondary skin infection and you wanna definitely pre uh, uh, prevent that. But the key, <clears throat> excuse me, is to use, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry, is to use a non-soap body wash because soaps can be too harsh for the skin. Even mild soaps can be too harsh for your skin if you have eczema. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, so that's what I usually recommend to my patients when they come in. So eczema um, may up, um, kya dekhe, ke, um, jo aapke jisse bache ke jisim par hoti hai na, bhoat dry ho jati hai, uh, kabhi kabhaar flaking hoti hai, Feeling mm -hmm. hot, skin hot, mota uh, Very itchy. Par, joints per aati hai. Yes, yes. Concentration hot, na joints per. See, you're understanding even without me translating. <laughs> translating. <laughs> Very good. <coughs> so, um, ye yahan par zyada toh par uh, problems hoti hai. Magar puri jism fir bhi ho sakti hai. To pehli jo pehli kam karna hota hai aapko ke avoidance hoti hai. So, um, aapko dekhna hai ke exposure kya hai. So, I'm just explaining that we need to first mm -hmm. avoid any of the allergens. Yeah. Um, then, uske baad, jaysay, um, Dr. Richardson has said that um, jab, jis cheeze se aap bachche ko nahate, usme sabun nahi hona chahiye. So, aapko botal par dekhna hota hai, sabun ke baghair wali jo washes hote na, wo istamal karna chahiye. Soap free washes. Mm -hmm. Or, jab bachche ko nahate hai na, to bachche itne gande, lagte gande, but itne gande nahi hote. Unko aram se, Dhote, don't scrub the kids, don't mm. leave them under the shower for too long. Ye sari cheeze, skin ko aggravate karti hai. Aur uske baad, achhi tarikye se moisturize kar rahe se, karna chahiye. I mean, you mentioned about moisturizing yeah. at night. Yes, um, the thing is, started. yeah, you want to, especially when the, right before the child goes to bed, they're wearing their pajamas. So you want to put a, some moisturizing yeah. lotion on their skin and then they put on their pajamas and then they go, they're under the cover. So that kind of seals in the moisture and moisture. Keep, helps keep the skin healthy and keeps the skin protected. If the skin, see what happens always, they always explain about the itch scratch cycle. Yeah. The more you scratch, the more you itch, the more irritated your skin comes. And so you get in an itch scratch cycle. But if you're moisturizing your skin, it won't be dry, it won't be itchy. And it is, you usually see eczema on, especially in young infants, it'll be on the face, and it either be where the joints are, either in the front or the back of the joints, like behind the knee, by the wrist, where the, in the little fold of the skin, where the elbow is, round the neck especially. And sometimes these areas get moist because the skin is folded on each other. You can get like a secondary yeast infection in there. So you have to be very careful. If that happens, you, you, you're, you can just see the doctor and get treatment for that. Yeah. So Dr. Richardson kya bata rahi thi ek trick bata rahi thi ke jab aap bacche ko nahate aur moisturize karte na ya aapko shaam ko karna chahiye jis bacche ko eczema ya atopic dermatitis hoti hai kyunki jab aap nahate wo sabun ke baghair wale jo washes ke sath nahana chahiye aur phir unko achhi tarike se cream karna chahiye wo hypoallergic cream ke sath cream mein koi khushbu nahi hona chahiye aur phir jab wo kapde pehnte hain aur bistar ke andar jate hain na to sari cheeze sealed in ho jati hai jism par rehta hai so, रात में ज्यादा बेहतर होती है तो अगर दवाई की जरूरत होती है दवाई लगाने की स्टेरॉइड लगाने की तो वो ज्यादा बेहतर तरीके से अब्सॉर्ब हो जाती है आपका जो टारगेट है बच्चे का स्किन को अच्छी तरीके से नरम रखने के लिए तो जितनी दफा आपको मॉइस्चराइज करना करना होता है आपको करना होता है सो आई एम सेइंग दैट द टारगेट ऑफ दिस आवर ट्रीटमेंट इज टू कीप द स्किन नाइस मॉइस्चराइज moisturize if you need to because often yeah. i'll have parents who come in they've just moisturized once in the morning and they come in mm -hmm. the afternoon they're like my skin's so dry the mm -hmm. child's skin's dry i was like well you you are allowed to put in another layer of moisturizer mm -hmm. that's that's mm -hmm. okay i mean yes. you agree with yes. that yeah yes i do i do i yeah. i think it's important especially if they're younger children you definitely want to keep their skin moisturized right. because when they're going to sleep especially that's when the children tend to really scratch and dig into their skin 
And the more you scratch the skin, the more you traumatize it, the more you itch. So, and again, I cannot, you, you, you don't want to get in that itch scratch cycle. That's when it's really yeah. bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Vishesh, I'm saying that your target should be to give the child their own, to which I don't want to scratch it, to not be harsh. So if you are doing moisturizing, तो वो इतना ज्यादा स्क्रैच नहीं करेंगे जब भी बच्चा एक दफा स्क्रैच करता है तो जे जिसम के जो नीचे ना स्किन के नीचे एक सेल्स होती है जिसमें हिस्टामिन होती है वो रिलीज होती है तो खारिश ज्यादा हो जाती है इचिंग ज्यादा हो जाती है और फिर उसको फिर से स्क्रैच करना दिस इज द कॉल्ड ये कहलाती है इच स्क्रैच साइकिल तो आपको इसको इंटरप्ट करना चाहिए इसको बंद करना चाहिए तो इस इस इसको करने के लिए आपको बच्चे को अच्छी तरीके से मॉइस्चराइज करना चाहिए आपका टारगेट है कि स्किन को अच्छी तरीके से सॉफ्ट और सफल रखना है ताकि आपको स्टेरॉइड की जरूरत नहीं हो एंड स्टेरॉइड अगर आपने स्किन को अच्छी तरीके से आई मीन यू वुड से इट वोंट अब्सॉर्ब बिफोर व्हेन वी वर राइट 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 इफ द स्किन राइट इफ द स्किन इज थिक थिक एंड बिकॉज़ इट्स ट्राइंग टू प्रोटेक्ट इटसेल्फ फ्रॉम ऑल दैट स्क्रैचिंग देन द मेडिसिन कैन नॉट गेट into the skin to heal the skin so you want to keep the skin moisturized so that it can receive the medication the steroid treatment that will going to get and heal the skin yeah ha to doctor is sam bol rahe hai ki agar aap jism ko achhi tarike se naram nahi rakhenge to agar hum steroid istemal dawai wali cream istemal karenge wo jism ke andar nahi jati hai to aapko pehli line hai so free cream washes अच्छी तरीके से बच्चे को मॉइस्चराइजर इस्तेमाल करें हाइपोएलर्जिक मॉइस्चराइजर जिस पे कोई खुशबू नहीं होती आई एम सेइंग इट्स सपोज्ड टू बी नॉन परफ्यूमरी बिकॉज़ यू गॉट लॉट्स ऑफ परफ्यूम ओह यस या यू डोंट वांट एनी लव स्मेलिंग आवर बेबीज एंड वी लव आवर हैविंग आवर बेबीज स्मेल लाइक नाइस सो लाइक नो दे शुड स्मेल लाइक बेबीज दे शुडंट स्मेल लाइक परफ्यूम अम हां अगर आप ये नहीं करेंगे तो दवाई अगर जो खाल है ना अगर बहुत ड्राई और थिक हो जाती है तो दवाई अंदर नहीं हो जाती नहीं जाता है और यहाँ पर इन्फेक्शन की बहुत रिस्क होती है और अगर आप देख रहे हैं कि लाल हो रहा है गीली हो रही है तो आपको फौरन आकर दिखाना होता है ताकि हम देख सकते हैं कि अगर उसके ऊपर दूसरी वाली दवाई लगाना चाहिए आम तौर पर फंगल इन्फेक्शन हो जाती है डॉक्टर रिचर्सन बोल रही है तो आम तौर पर हम कभी कभार वो एंटी फंगल्स भी डालते हैं Okay, so I just explained that often mm -hmm. in these areas it can be fungal infection. So we need, yeah. on top of all these other medications, your mm -hmm. moisturizer, your steroids, we also need to add mm -hmm. in an antifungal in there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I think it's important to highlight uh, that um, which I've done that without mm -hmm. doing all of the stuff, um, mm -hmm. there's no point in giving the steroid because I have a lot of parents mm -hmm. who come in, they won't moisturize, 